This video is the second in a series of video lessons for the Grade 12 English Home Language students within the IEB curriculum. The lessons are to be used in the fourth genre option, which includes film study. This lesson explains the basic camera shots that can be used by the cinematographer. The most important piece of equipment in the filmmaker's arsenal is, of course, the camera. It's used to produce the photography that is assembled to narrate the story of the film. In the old days, a camera was used to take photographs at the rate of 24 individual ones every second. Each individual photograph is called a frame. The frames are then projected onto the screen at 24 frames per second to simulate natural movement. Nowadays, the process is different as digital cameras are used, like this one. But the principles behind the cinematography remain the same. The filmmaker has to put together a sequence of pictures to tell the story. A single photograph is called a frame. If we were making a movie about a spaceship landing somewhere, we would have this frame. A sequence of frames is called a shot. Here we can see a number of frames that tell the story. This sequence of shots is called a scene. And in this scene, you can see people landing on an alien planet. So a shot is defined as an uninterrupted piece of film that is run through the camera. Hundreds of shots are edited together to make the finished film. A take is a single recording of a shot. Typically, many takes will be filmed of each shot. Later, the editor will choose the best take of each shot and assemble these into the final film. Hundreds of hours of takes are filmed and then thrown away. In composing shots, the filmmaker can vary the apparent distance between the camera and the subject be that a person or an object that he or she is filming. This can be done physically by moving the camera closer or by using a lens that makes the subject appear closer. Typically, the closer the object appears, the more importance it has for the audience. This is known as shot scale. There are six basic types of shots. An extreme close-up, a close-up, a medium shot, a full shot, a long shot, and an extreme long shot. Let's go back to the scene that we had at the beginning of these slides, the spaceship landing on an alien planet. Here we have the extreme long shot, also known as the establishing shot. This shot contains a lot of the landscape and helps to establish the location and the likely atmosphere of that part of the film. It's very often used at the beginning of a film, like this one. Do any of you recognize this? It's the establishing shot from The Bourne Ultimatum showing the viewer that the action opens in the North African city of Tangier in Morocco. Now, even if you haven't watched this film, Stagecoach, you will immediately recognize the genre because of this establishing shot. It's a Western. You can see the typical landscape. You'll expect men on horses to come galloping in at any moment. This shot contains a fair amount of landscape or background, though figures in the scene are recognisable as being both human and male or female. 
here's an example of a long shot from the film The Pursuit of Happiness. Here you can see the father and son standing on the beach in San Francisco looking at the Golden Gate Bridge. The full shot contains much less landscape or background, but it does contain the full length of any figure in the frame. If there are two figures in the frame, it's called a two shot. If there are three, a three shot or a full two or a full three. Here's an example of a full shot taken from the film American Gangster. You can see Denzel Washington's character from top to bottom as he strides down a street. This is a two shot from the 2012 movie Ted. Usually a two shot is used to show that the two characters are of equal importance. And this is a three shot from the movie The Darjeeling Limited you can see that the camera has to be quite far from the subjects in order to fit them in. This ensures that the setting takes precedence over the characters. In a medium shot, there's less background and the figures in the frame are only seen from the waist up. This too can be called a two shot or a three shot, depending on the number of figures. Here's a medium shot from the film The Lovely Bones. This shot is often used to focus audience attention on a particular character. A close-up contains almost no background, but focuses on the whole of an object or a person's face. This frame showing Jack Nicholson in the 1980 film The Shining is a fine example of the effective use of a close-up on a character's face. You're supposed to be disturbed by this picture. An extreme close-up focuses on an aspect of an object in great detail or a part of a person's face. It could be something like the label on an item of clothing, a newspaper headline, this extreme close-up from the Blair Witch Project highlights the sheer terror experienced by this character. A point of view shot involves the camera taking the view of one of the characters. The camera becomes the character's eyes and sees things only from that character's point of view. To take this shot, the camera is often placed on the operator's shoulder to simulate the jerkiness of normal movement, such as walking through a jungle or walking along a footpath. The result is that you see the object in the same way as the character does. Here, from the 1948 film Forces of Evil, you and the victim are in the same position staring up at the man holding the gun. It's a very effective shot and can be used to create suspense. This is what it looks like when it's over the shoulder from the 1994 film Pulp Fiction. This is an insert shot. An insert shot is not of a person, instead it's used to emphasize a relevant object. It often calls the viewer's attention to the time, a newspaper story, a symbolic object, police evidence, or what a character is seeing or not seeing in a given scene. A character looking at a watch is significant. For example, the viewer might need to know exactly how many seconds are left before a bomb explodes. The insert shot shows that kind of detail. There's something that you should bear in mind as you analyze the various shots. It's what is called the 180 degrees rule. We measure circles in degrees from 0 to 360. 
if you were facing someone and turned 180 degrees, you'd have your back to them. What would happen if you turned around 360 degrees? In film, there's an imaginary line that connects two characters or a character and an object. By keeping the camera on one side of this axis, one character will remain frame right and the other frame left. Otherwise, the audience may become confused. Some filmmakers break this rule on purpose. In these two frames from The Shining, the director has deliberately crossed the line by switching the characters around to create a sense of discord and confusion for the viewer. You should have a good understanding of the different kinds of camera shots after watching this video. Remember that you should apply this knowledge as you watch the films in class. You should think about why the shots have been chosen by the director and what the effect is on you, the viewer. A lot of my material has been taken from this excellent Australian textbook, which I bought 25 years ago. I don't think it's in print anymore, but if you can get hold of a copy, you won't be disappointed. There's a sequel to this textbook called Featuring Film 2, but I haven't yet been able to find a copy. I'm also very grateful for the generous collaboration with an English teacher colleague in Wales, Sean Llewellyn, who inspired me to make these video lessons. Thank you, Sean. This video series deals with the technical and more generic aspects of film study, so you'll be able to apply them to any of the films which you have selected to study in class. Should you have any queries, please feel free to contact me using the email address that you see on the screen.